being here today. My name is Terry Connerton. I'm the uh, director of the South Carolina Association president. I'm also the director of the airport. I want to thank you for being here today. Hopefully the rain will hold off a little bit. Yesterday marks the first day of Aviation Week in South Carolina. What that basically is, is simply a, a week of where local airports can go ahead and showcase their activities that can connect to economic and education. I'm pleased to announce today that if you look inside the terminal here at Spartanburg, we have some of those uh, activities going on here. I want to make a mention to the uh, Spartanburg Science Center for the youth program we have. Over the last two years, we've had 28 children or students graduate from that program. We also have a program where we've actually uh, have a rewards program to returning customers by connecting to the local community here. We also have a carbon footprint program, which is actually sponsored by World Fuel, and the beneficiaries of that are people like the Noble Tree Foundation and also the uh, Nature Conservancy. Today's event is also marked by an important bill signing. So what I want to do right now is introduce you to James Stevens, who's the Executive Director of the South Carolina Aeronautics Commission. James. Thank you, Terry. It is a pleasure to be back with you in Spartanburg again today. If you remember, we were here two years ago during Aviation Week, and we got to celebrate what aviation does in South Carolina for all of us. So South Carolina Aviation Week happens every year. The governor has proclaimed this week to be South Carolina Aviation Week, and it always happens in conjunction with August 19th, which is Wilbur Wright's birthday. This year, however, we get to celebrate the passage of Senate Bill 675. What that means to South Carolina is great. And what you can see as evidence of the bill in its passage and the programs that are offered through the monies that were passed within that bill are really right here behind me, behind these people. Uh, the runways, the taxiways, the facilities here all benefit from the state aviation fund and the revenues that we enjoy through that fund through users of our airport system in South Carolina. We're here to celebrate that. With us today are my commissioners. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize each of them. I'm going to start with Commissioner Kaufman here on the end. She represents this district, District 4 here in South Carolina. We've got Commissioner Chris Bethay, District 7, Skeets Cooper 3. Mr. Bud Coward is our Commissioner Emeritus. Mr. David Anderson, District 2, and Marco Cavazzoni is in District 6. Our other two commissioners and chairman do send their regrets and they do regret not being able to be here today and celebrate the passage of this bill. The bill didn't happen because of the work of the commission per se. This bill passed because of a lot of people's efforts, one of which I'll introduce here in a minute, uh, Senator Josh Kimbrell. We've got uh, with him Senator Peeler, Representative Max Hyde, Representative Scott Talley, Representative Rita Allison, Representative Travis Moore, and Representative Roger Nutt, as well as our Lieutenant Governor and Governor here with us today. The bill is a passage of, of uh, through time of all, all of these individuals were part of its passage and part of the work, but Senator Kimbrell is a big part of why this bill passed. As a junior senator, he stepped in and stepped up to meet a need, to help try to meet a need for South Carolina, for aviation in South Carolina. Because of his work, because of the work of the individuals behind me, and a host of other people involved with the Aviation Association and others at each respective airport, we get to celebrate the passage of 675 and its impact on capital investments, maintenance, aviation education, and other things that we're going to leave behind one day for the next generation with this great system of airports that we're setting up with today. Senator Kimbrell. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for being here today. And Terry, thank you for hosting this great event here at the Spartanburg Airport. You know, since it is Aviation Week, it reminds me, I once heard that flying is the second greatest thrill known to man. The first is landing, uh, which is typically true. Uh, this bill was an important step forward for South Carolina, I believe, in terms of economic development. And our governor, lieutenant governor, worked very hard on that. And the British used to have an expression that said, he who rules the waves rules the world. But I do believe now that he who rules the skies rules the world. And the United States has led the world in uh, aviation technology, aeronautics technology, and South Carolina is doing an awfully good job of leading the way with, with big companies like Boeing moving here and all kinds of aerospace uh, entities moving to South Carolina. This bill will help 
uh, aid and abet that. And it, as the commissioner, or as James put it, this will expand opportunities for funding in South Carolina airports. It brings new investment. It'll bring in a whole lot of federal matching funds, which up until now we were not eligible for. So airports like this can succeed. Airports all over the state can succeed. Uh, as we mentioned, Governor, during the debate in the Senate, there's 46 counties in South Carolina, 44 have an airport. We're about to fix the other two. That's what we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, and airports like this are the backbone of the community. Because of this bill, I'm happy to announce today, and, and Terry Connerton's worked very hard on this in Spartanburg uh, Airport Authority, that Eric Anderson in the back over here, say hello to Eric. He is the CEO of a company called AED Aero out of Baltimore, Maryland, and they have announced they are moving the head, their office to Spartanburg Downtown Airport. They are moving to South Carolina as a U.S. defense contractor. And, and that's really important to this airport particularly because this is in an opportunity zone. And I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize Brianna from Senator Tim Scott's office. Where is Ms. Bateman? She's in, okay, in the back back there from Senator Tim Scott's office. Uh, Senator Scott was the sponsor of the uh, Opportunity Zone Act at the federal level. This airport is in an opportunity zone. And so the conjunction of this aeronautics funding bill and the Opportunity Zone legislation at the federal level brought uh, Eric and AED to this airport. And we're going to be working on that in the months ahead uh, Governor, that's going to be a great, uh, another aeronautics uh, jobs, uh, aviation jobs in South Carolina, new investment to our state. Additionally, this helps to, again, unlock federal matching funds for airport development, including new airports. And the neighboring county, uh, Cherokee County, as my friend Senator Harvey Peeler, who's the president of the South, the South Carolina Senate, has been working to ensure that an airport is brought to Cherokee County to help with economic development there. And this bill being passed and the federal matching funds it will unleash will allow us to move forward. And I know James Stevens is going to work on this to help Senator Peeler get an airport in Cherokee County. And that's going to be a huge win for not only for Cherokee, but for Spartanburg and the whole state. And so I'm really excited about, about that. And I would be remiss if I didn't say thanks to Senator Scott Talley. He's kind of hiding in the back. But Senator Talley worked very hard to ensure that this bill became law and worked very hard to get it through the Senate. So Senator Talley, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And with that, it's my honor to introduce the president of the South Carolina Senate, a man who's, uh, who knows the ins and outs of how to make sure good legislation is passed in this state, who works hard with the Finance Committee as well, the president of the state Senate, Senator Harvey Peeler. Thank you. Look in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. No, it's Josh Kimbrell. <laughs> The reason I say that is it's so seldom that a freshman senator can accomplish so much so quickly. It wasn't long after he got elected, he called me and said, Mr. President, I'd like to meet with you and have breakfast over at Denny's one morning. And I did. We sat down. He immediately said, Senator, I want to help you land an airport in Cherokee County, pun intended. I, when I looked at him, I said, you know, I'm going to like this guy. <laughs> because we've been working for years, Governor, to try to get an airport in Cherokee County. And hopefully this will be one of the important pieces of the puzzle to be able to have that airport in Cherokee County. Thank you so much for helping with this. Thank you for this today. Now I'm charged with introducing Henry McMaster. The responsibility of introducing Henry McMaster to a South Carolinian is like trying to explain the big peach to somebody from Gaffney. <laughs> but, but Sam said, read this, read this. I said, I will. He's leading South Carolina in economic development, creating over 45,000 new jobs and over 14 billion, with a B, dollars in new capital investment. He actively promoted and championed and made the av new aviation fund a reality. He knows the change will benefit smaller airports and provide development in rural areas like Cherokee County. We are fortunate to have him as our leader during this time in the state's history. Please join me in welcoming our governor, Henry McMaster. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.
Uh, the first lady, who is a Spartanburg born, bred, and married, uh, sends her regards. Wish she could be here, but she's doing something else right now, and, and uh, her mama's home here, which is Lawrence County. Uh, Senator Peter, thank you. Senator Peter, say airports are just like opinions. Everybody ought to have at least one. <laughs> so we're working on it. People seem to be coming to South Carolina from all over, and I'll tell you a quick story. Some of you may have heard it about the fellow that was, was traveling salesman, and he was going all around the country, and he was up in Minnesota or someplace and went into a church. He liked to go if he's in, in town on, on Sunday, he'd find a church and go to it. Went to a little church, and when he went to the little social hall afterwards, he saw a payphone. Y'all remember what a payphone some of y'all do? Some of y'all, you may gotta raise your hand, but I know some of this crowd knows what a payphone is. And he saw a little sign that said, calls to heaven, $10. He thought, my goodness, what is, what is in the world? Well, he went to this town, that town, and went to another town. Went to church, went to the social hall. There was a pay phone. There was a little sign. Saw, calls to heaven, $10. So he started looking everywhere he went. And sure enough, here and there, all over the country, saw those little signs. Came to South Carolina. Went to the little church. Went to the little social hall. Sure enough, pay phone. Little sign said, calls to heaven, 10 cents. He found the preacher, said, what's going on here? Why calls to heaven 10 cents? And everywhere else is $10. He says, well, calls to heaven in South Carolina, a local call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we all know that. We know the history of aviation has been very interesting. I read the other day that just, I think it was just months before the Wright brothers took off at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, that the New York Times had a feature article saying that airplane travel is at least a million or a million and a half years off. And General, I think it was Colonel then, but later General Billy Mitchell after World War I was uh, berating the Army and uh, Brass and the Department of Defense for not having air power and they court-martialed him because, it, because of his criticism of the policy. Well, we know today how important it is, and not only is it important to have large airports for people to travel way away and come from way away, but we have to have, we have, to have airports everywhere, because that is, as a, today is as an indispensable means of transportation as the telephone or your cell phone is for communication. And when we have the glorious assets, natural resources, and people and the opportunities that we have in South Carolina. We can't let anything hold us back. So this here is we are opening more doors for the people of South Carolina. And the reason companies are coming to South Carolina, because of the natural resources, because of the beautiful weather, because of a lot of things, but it's mainly when you get down to it, and they've told me it's because of the people. So we have to have a way that tells us that our people are strong. And we have to have a way for our people to move among each other, to go to places, and for people to come here to work with us. So this is a great step forward. And I want to congratulate all those uh, involved, notably Sen Senator Kimbrell, as well as to Senator Peeler and Senator Talley and others that worked so hard on this to get it done. It's, it's been a while coming, but it's here now, and it's here just at the right time. And ladies and gentlemen, I can promise you, and you tell all the children, South Carolina's going straight to the top. There's not another place like it in the whole world. Always be proud of South Carolina. Now let's sign them up. Oh, do we have any questions? Do we have any answers? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Sign them up? Okay. Watch this.